When creating course material, tutorial style videos, explainer videos, or any video where you want to amplify your message with on-screen text, you might want to create a slide look and feel with animated bullet points to help amplify that message. In this video, we're going to create slides that have animated bullets and we're going to do that all inside Camtasia. Be sure that you watch right through because I also share with you some tips on making these animated bullets as reusable library assets. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. In today's video on animated bullets in Camtasia, we're going to look at three different slide concepts each with a different kind of uh, animated bullet effect going on. Like you see this one on this first screen, you saw that it revealed the text and then it did a line at a time. In the second one, you see all the lines appear at once, five lines. It's also a reveal text approach. And in the third one, you're going to see that we have actually an animated icon in addition to a sliding effect with the bullets, three separate bullets coming on. And I love to do uh, animated slides inside Camtasia because it gives us the power to change things up if we need to because our vocal track may change or we may add more stuff and you know because the slides are done inside Camtasia we have the full flexibility of managing timing and syncing of things. Now let's just briefly talk about the considerations for animating inside Camtasia. So first off use backgrounds that aren't too busy. As you can see in my media bin I have various uh, widescreen formatted backgrounds which are useful. Try to have them sort of plain looking with a, maybe a little texture or pattern but not too busy so that the text and bullets can stand out nicely. Next choose a bullet point style. I There's many icon styles I'm using here as you can see in my media bin. You can also produce what's called an alt key code uh, bullet which we're going to look at. Plus you could create a shape custom from another tool like like PowerPoint or even Photoshop, etc., and bring that in. And then our next message is animating the bullet points if desired. I love animating the bullet points. So not only do you have an icon that you can animate, you also have the text and you want to have a nice experience for the user when they see the lines come on screen and sync that with your vocal narrations and then create a bullet point library assets. That's a very important fact because, factor because you want to be able to create assets that you can reuse in the long run without having to recreate each time. And this will help your workflow because you'll be getting things done faster. Our first example for a bullet point style is using what's called the Alt key code. For people that use Windows, if you press down the Alt key plus the numbers 0149, but you have to do it from the keypad for it to work like you know be sure your num number lock is on and keyed in from the keypad uh, and you can get a circle bullet point so for example you see that up here in this box we have a circle bullet point here we have two of them but notice how with this approach because it's all in the text in the same font we we kind of lose an, an ability to have it nice uh, have the second lines indented to be in alignment with the first one after the bullet point. But I'll just show you here. I'll press the Alt 0149. Alt 0149. There you go. There's another bullet point. It's that simple. For Mac users, they need to use the Option key plus the 8. In addition to that example of the Alt plus the 0149 key, here's a few other symbols that you can get. For example, uh, there's a right triangle, a little rectangle square, and something that looks like a gear with different alt key code combinations here. I've included below the URL so that if you want to go and read the details about how to get these co codes and just how it works in case you had any questions, you can just go to that URL address down below. For bullet point styles, you can also use callouts inside Camtasia. As you can see here, if we go to annotations, and we come in, as you can see, you can get a circle, there's an ellipse, and I have brought a bunch of these different shapes on screen here. So you can see I got the star from the area called shapes right here. And you also have triangle and rectangle, and you also 
have arrows and you can get arrows from here. So I just sized a few of these up, put them on here. So you have a whole bunch of options inside Camtasia for callouts that you can use for bullets. Another way to create a bullet point style is to use something like Photoshop's custom shape tool or in any other image editor or creation tool that you you prefer to use. And here's the last source I'm going to show you today for finding bullet point styles to use, and that is icons. I often go to a resource called Icon Finder, and with Icon Finder, you can do searching, and in this case, this is a bullet point set. There's, there's all kinds of options. And what, what's really great about Icon Finder is that you can then create and color the icon that you choose. So there's actually different elements. So you can actually select different elements. And in this case, you can see I've assigned the color with RGB code 128, 128, 128, or also known as 80, 80, 80. I'm going to show you another slide on this in a minute. And this gives me a lot of flexibility for when I come in Camtasia. And let me show you what I mean by that. So first, let's come back. We'll close this off. So see here, there's, you can easily make them different colors, scale them, do whatever you want. You know, so the icons are pretty flexible and they're all, I downloaded them in size 512 by 512. And now if we go to this screen here, this is also an icon I got, which looks like, you know, like a video or a YouTube uh, kind of hint in terms of the style uh, design. And I colored this one in the gray which is the middle gray, which has those codes, which I told you. But now if I go to colorize this, I go to visual effect and I add the colorize on top of the gray, you can see that the color here under colorize approximates what you see there. So if I go to white, well, that's not a good example. If I go to the blue, you got, you got the blue. If I go down to the color wheel and choose something else in the greens, okay, in the yellow, Red, um, oranges. Okay, so it fairly nicely approximates the real color that you're assigning. So imagine you've now taken an icon from somewhere else and inside Camtasia, you can, you have the flexibility to color adapt it. And I think that's super powerful. Not only that, if we go here and look at this example, you can see here, I've got check mark icon. This check mark is, is also in the size of 512 by 512 and it was colorized as well. See the orange on the side. But now I'm going to go and update that media. And if I change the media to something else that's 512 by 512, we'll go for this check mark. And let's open. See, we just got an instantaneous change and substitution everywhere on, on what that um, bullet point is. So see how powerful it is if you have the assets that are sized the same. You can do things, you know, very quickly. So keep some of those things in mind when you're going to be creating reusable assets, which we're going to talk about shortly. The other cool thing is with this setup here, you can see I have it grouped. So I'm just going to sh I'm, I'm make the track a little bigger here and stretch it out a bit so you can see. I have what's called the check mark callouts. Okay, so I'm going to undo the change I did last. So there we go. See, it says check mark bull bullets. And if I ungroup that, you can see that you can see there's a pairing for each line. We have text and a check mark, text and a check mark, and they're all nicely lined up and they're all in a group. And the beauty of this all being in a group is that it gives you the ability to resize things without things getting buggered up. So if I grab the handle up here in the top right corner and I resize, see how nice that is? I can pretty much do anything I want. And oftentimes you may want to pull that, you know, this as an asset from a library, bring it on, and then, you know, double click, go inside and change your text. You know, this is new text now. And, you, and then, um, you know, play with moving it around where you want. And then you may want to do something like take an image from your media library, throw it on, and then uh, do a few things. And then, you know, so you now have, you know, an, an adaptable uh, solution with the text and you did it all you know, very, very quickly. Now let's take a look at our first animated bullets in Camtasia example. I've used what's called the reveal text behavior here. And as you can see, first there's a single line, then a pair of lines that come out followed by three lines. So I want you to, to see that we have a number of elements going on here. First, we have a logo, which is my branding. And we can see that each of the lines down below here is represented by a different group. 
So, you know, the first line, the single line, then the double line, and then the triple line at the end. If we go in, uh, and expand the group and look in the single line, you're going to see I have the text below and then another group within here for the logo. The logo is made up of a shape, which was just a circle, and my, my logo. So you can see here that if I were to come in here, I could easily, you know, decompose this. And just to show you how that came together, I'm just showing you the elements that are there. We can leave that. Now, if we look at the text, you saw how it, it had that behavioral effect, and I call, told you it was called reveal. Now, if we look on the right-hand side here under the properties, there's an in, a during, and an out. And the during and out have none, so there's no activity because I want the slide to just end with no, no transition effects for what we're doing right now. But on the in, I'm using the reveal feature, and the text is being revealed from left to right, and it's got an ease in expo um, movement. So the little squiggle line here to the right of each of these fields represents that these parameters have been changed for, to be different from the default. So to see and appreciate the text with the speed in which it goes across here, as you can see there, see how fast that the line went? So that's adjusted here. I increased speed to 100% and I also adjusted the offset down to just be 0 0.01. So that helped to make the speed of the text come like it like it is and left to right that's pretty obvious and an ease in expo is a movement. You can play with these and sort of find um, the kind of performance you're looking for. Again that's an experimental experience to what gives you the satisfaction for the end result. Now let's suppose I wanted to, I'm going to move my playhead here, all the bullets are on the screen. Now suppose that I wanted to shrink these up and they take too much real estate on the screen. So if I highlight the, the three groups of lines and then try to do uh, uh, scaling down, look at how it gets all messed up. Well, we went through this before. I'm going to undo that, that scaling. And what we should be doing is grouping these together. So now... As you can see, there's one group for all the, the sets of lines. And now when we resize or move them around, everything works harmoniously together. So I just wanted to show you, if you ever want to edit anything specifically, you can just double click inside or go inside and expand the group and edit something in particular. And, uh, you know, it's quite easy to do. Just like I'm showing you here, you know, we're adjusting the content here in the second line of output. In this next animated bullets example in Camtasia, you can see that this was just five lines together coming across all at once. So in this case, we want to present everything together. It used the same reveal behavior. And you can see here, I have all of the single lines of the five, all, all five of them here. And then if we open up the group, you can see the text. If we open up the text, we can see the reveal behaviors there. And on the top right, the reveal has the same parameters. Everything's exactly the same. But now what I want to do is put this in, the, in my library because I might want to reuse this. So the best way to do that is to group everything up as we've already discussed. Now on the bottom, I have the text at the top. I'm not worried about the title, pay, the title at the top of the uh, slide or the background because that may be changed depending on whatever I'm using. I just want the bullet point lines and the logo. So let's, let's uh, grab all of those together. Okay. And I'm going to click, uh, I selected them all and I'm going to right mouse button, add to library. And I'm going to call this I'm going to put it in my Gord Eisman branding library, okay? And I'm going to call this um, logo bullets. And then I'm going to go dash, and I'm going to say five single lines. And then uh, the, the font, which I'm just going to show you. Oh, which I can't. Well, well the font is harvest. And I believe it's 87 point. So we're just going to go 87 harvest. So that gives me some identification for what I'm storing. I click OK. You can see here it just appeared on the left-hand side in my library. We're under my Gord Eisman branding library, but I already have a folder for bullet points. So I want that to be added there. So we're going to add it into that 
top I just dragged it and put it in the library so now we have the assets for those bullets and now if I were to go and add another slide or something like that and I wanted to bring those assets on I already have something right here that I can add them to we're gonna do that right now so I'm just gonna drag the five single bullets right on it to the playhead and then you see voila they're there and I can move them around do whatever I wish to learn more cool tips on animating text techniques in Camtasia, be sure to check out my playlist called Camtasia Text Effects. You can click on the playlist link provided on the screen here or the link in the video description below. Question of the day. Have you tried making animated bullet point slides yet? If so, are you creating them for your video marketing videos or your course material? Whatever your use case, please share with us in the comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out some of the additional Camtasia tutorials to help you on your editing journey. And I'll see you soon in another